The Dallas comedian Roy Lee had been a close friend of Mo 3's during his come up. Mo 3 said that he became a fan of Roy Lee's comedy after watching clips of his in the studio, with the two of them eventually meeting and becoming good friends. I said on my downtime, I'm watching videos of him, you know what I'm saying? I want to give me a little laugh or whatever, you know what I'm mm. saying? He didn't know until I met him, like he was already a star to me. You get what I'm saying? But he looking at me the same way, like, hey, Mo 3. Mm. I'm looking at you like, you Roy Lee, though. You going viral. Like, you start strong. Mm. So it's like, now that's just my partner. Yeah. Come on, pull up on what we got going, you know what I'm saying? So from here, Roy Lee would be seen frequently at Mo 3 shows during his rise to the top of the Dallas rap scene. <laughs> However, in an interview following Mo 3's arrest for that fatal shooting in Fort Worth, Roy Lee would end up dropping some shade on Mo 3's rival Yella Beezy, saying in a real life interview that some of the rappers claiming Oak Cliff can come over and get robbed. This was an apparent reference to an earlier video where Yella Beezy had claimed to be from Oak Cliff, America, and saying that he runs the city. Oak Cliff, America. You from Oak Cliff, America? Don't fuck with us. Till you come on up so we can rob you. Cause you ain't really from Oak Cliff, right? <laughs> apparently, this comment was taken as a sign of disrespect by Yella Beezy and others from Oak Cliff. And apparently, following this interview's release, a fight would take place between Roy Lee and Yella Beezy at the King of Diamonds nightclub. On August the 16th, 2017, Roy Lee took to social media to call out Yella Beezy in a heated rant, admitting to dissing Yella Beezy in the earlier interview, suggesting that he wanted a fair one on one fight with Beezy like he was in prison, and suggesting that Beezy and his whole crew had jumped him. I did an interview and I was talking about. I ain't lying in the interview. You understand me? This beef ain't got nothing to do with nobody else but Yellow Bees and Roy Lee. This little boxing match ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. All these hot side. What's up with them partners back there, Yellow? What's up with them dudes back there, man? What's up with them dudes back there? Them riders. Yeah, them riders back there behind you right there. I ain't talking to them. talking to you. Yeah, I want the one-on-one -on -one with you. I ain't talking about them. Tell them behind you to chill, man. Tell them to chill. Only I ain't got number four people with me. I ain't calling my cousin them. I ain't calling my partner them. I know the fight ain't gonna never be be able to be set up. You know what I mean? Because if we was in the penitentiary, them OGs would be like, y'all youngsters go back there and fight one on one real quick, man. Go on to get that off y'all chest. You set up the fight. I've been trying to call all the big dope dealers in the city, all the ballers in the city, set up the fire. Well, what's wrong with me setting up a fight and I'm the one that got hit? And everybody told me I let it go. Well, how I'ma let it go? If y'all didn't let it go at the front park when you got snuck. How I'ma let it go when you got snuck at the club somewhere and you ain't let it go and you seen him at Walmart you was trying to fight? How, I ain't, how I'ma catch him one-on-one -on -one when he always deep somewhere? When he always 10 or 8 deep somewhere? And I don't be numbered by 4 deep because I'm in the Cadillac. Now it's on YouTube. Now everybody want to interview me about it. I ain't going to bash them. I'm just mad because you snuck me and then you don't want to fight again. Come on, man. That ain't nothing. I'm just talking about square it up. Oh, you're a rapper. You don't want to get embarrassed or you don't want to lose. You don't want to get out there and look slouchy. And from here, Roy Lee would go on to do yet more interviews, speaking openly about the altercation and putting dirt on Yella Beezy's name in the comedic fashion that Dallas came to love him for. A few days later, Roy Lee appeared in a Game 101 interview on the topic, elaborating in more detail, saying Yella Beezy tried to sucker punch him in the club and missed, and then his crew from Oak Cliff got involved. Yeah, he came out the DJ booth and tried to hit me. I seen him out the... You know, at me at the corner of my eye, I blocked him. And then me and him just me posted up a little bit. And then the guard grabbed me and one of them hit me in the back of my mother's head. And so how many of them jumped you? It was like, I think, think two of them hit me. Well, one of them hit me in the back of my head and one of them snatched my chain. Roy Lee would continue to repeat his calls for a one-on-one -on -one fight with Yella Beezy and beginning to call him a new nickname, the Pink Panther, and continuing pushing for a fight. So you waiting on a fight with who? The Pink Man, Pink Panther, whatever y'all want to call him, man. You're just trying to get him around, man, but he running and ducking and dodging. Hold on, man, who you trying to get? Damn, you jumped straight out the gate, man. Yeah. Who you trying to get around with? The old Pink, the Yellow Belly. The yellow Beezy, man. I seen him at King of Diamonds, and uh, he tried to sneak me. And, and, and I got jumped a little bit by his partner then, but he ain't hit me, so that's why I want to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> uh -oh. 
Oh, 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 Clearly Roy Lee was upset about the disrespect and he was hellbent in interviews to call out Yellow Beezy, mock him and put dirt on his name. Perhaps he really wanted the fight or perhaps he just felt that these rants made for funny content for his followers. But over the course of these interviews, he would continue to mock Yellow Beezy and saying that he's not really from Oak Cliff. What do you mean that he didn't go to no schools in Oak Cliff? He didn't go to no schools. He had to go to schools in Oak Cliff to be from Oak Cliff? Yeah, 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 you gotta go to school. Yeah, yeah, you gotta go to school on Oak Cliff to help fight somebody. I guess he's saying, uh, I'm telling him he ain't from Oak Cliff. He ain't go to no school in Oak Cliff. I'm not lying. Because if I was lying, he would have been saying something. Like, I went here, I went here, I went here. Perhaps Roy Lee didn't realize at the time that he was playing with fire. Or perhaps he simply didn't care that he was dissing one of the city's most beloved street rappers with an army of fans and goons ready to put in work for him. But he refused to let it go and continued cracking jokes in interview after interview. In November 2017, Roy Lee did another interview with Real Life, saying that Yella Beezy had turned down his offer of a one-on-one -on -one fight and he still wants get back. But now I called him out. To fight for eight thousand dollars, he talking about nah, I don't want to fight. What, what, what my leg gonna come back at? I'm gonna get mine, man. And he'd go on to say that him and BZ can't squash their beef any other way than a fight. Some shit. And you and Yellow BZ should be squashed. No, nah, I need that boxing match. <laughs> That's what he's scared of. Be talking about just see him when you see him. Nah, y'all gonna be deeper than me. I don't go number four deep to the club. I don't go number five deep to the club. Y'all gonna be selling cars deep, man. Lee would continue calling out BZ for not being from Oak Cliff and saying that at least Mo3 went to a tough school in the Dallas area. You can't go to the DISD schools, you understand me? You on camp. That's why, that's why it hurted me because they was with Mo3 and other rappers saying that way, they wasn't from where they from, but Mo3 went to uh, the, the, these schools in North Dallas. You understand me? But he ain't go to Oak Cliff, Sock, Kimmel, Carter. Eventually, Roy Lee would get heated, going as far as to say that Yella is a and that he should stop talking about shooters, even threatening to involve people's mothers and grandmothers. No, you can't get mad at me. I'm the comedian. <laughs> now you're talking about, no, nah, I don't, don't, don't want to fight. Now you want to see your shooters. You can get ugly like that. I can, I can screenshot mamas and grannies and you talking about? They ain't got nothing from her. I'm talking about from her. I ain't talking about from her. That's easy. You know, I, done, I, I just got out of jail from seeing locked up to go do 60. Roy Lee would end the interview with one final piece of disrespect, saying if Yella Beezy can't fight him in his own city, then he will get robbed when he leaves Texas. And even questioning whether or not he is really a crip. So if you go out of town in New York, you don't snatch that. If you go to uh, Atlanta, Chicago, California, don't take that. Mm. But you want to take it to some shooting. Oh no, we yep. Ain't no Crips in Forney. Ain't no Crips in Mesquite. Roy Lee's mockery of Yellow Beezy was relentless. Clearly his comedy skills combined with a bruised ego over the sucker punch had Roy Lee cracking joke after joke at Yellow Beezy's expense. But to be fair to Yellow Beezy, it's understandable why he wouldn't want to fight a comedian for $8,000 at this point. Because during this time in 2017, his career was going from strength to strength. In 2017, Yellow Beezy's career was taking off. His latest mixtape, Lightwork Volume 2, released on the 21st of November 2017, and that tape included his future hit single, That's On Me. The track had lyrics where BZ referred to his ops being after him, and he would rap that people are following him on Twitter and in the streets trying to rob him, but saying he keeps his pistol on him, as well as lyrics where he denied ever being shot. The track itself got a music video and a major push from BZ's team. And from here, the song became a monster hit over the course of the next year. Today, the video for that song has over 130 million views on YouTube, with the track gaining mainstream traction, even peaking at number 56 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, eventually with the song being certified gold. And from here, getting an all-star remix that racked up a staggering 272 million YouTube views, including extra verses from 2 Chains, T.I., Rich the Kid, Jeezy, Boosie, and Trap Boy Freddy. 
who was also having a productive 2017, with his latest release Overtime dropping the 1st of July 2017. With all this going on in the midst of Mo3 catching a case after the nightclub shooting in Fort Worth, losing him his deal with Epic and going broke. But Mo3 continued pushing things forward, dropping a music video for his track True Story where he addressed the nightclub shooting with that coming out in October 2017. This set the stage for his next major project release, Shotters 3.0, coming out on the 15th of March 2018. But while Mo3 was trying to overcome the struggles that came from that deadly incident at his birthday show, Yellow Beezy and Trap Boy Freddy were pushing their careers forward too, and Roy Lee was continuing to do interviews, making Yellow Beezy the butt of the joke. Roy Lee would appear on Real Life once again for a January 2018 interview, where he elaborated further on the altercation between him and Beezy's team, this time accompanied by his two nephews who were apparently there at the time of the fight, with it being suggested that at the time, Roy Lee was being drunk and aggressive. This my nephew. These two my nephews I love. Allegedly, you were uh, being real aggressive in the club. <laughs> Uncharacteristic of uh, Roy Lee. <laughs> and I see him start going at the mouth. All right, uh, who you be with? Uh, you, 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 you with Yellow Bees? That's his exact word. He just tripping. He drunk. That's what he do. He drink. We drink. <laughs> So I'm watching him, he, he stayed and oh, you be with Yellow Bees? And it don't look like he ain't got, he ain't got no, nothing to do with that. How was he look? Confused. <laughs> he don't know what's going on. It's like, oh, I ain't got nothing to do with that. What you and Yellow Bees got going, I ain't got nothing to do with that. And Roy Lee still asked him again. No, nah, no, nah, I'm saying though, do you be with Yellow Bees? <laughs> uh, I, I, I ain't say do you got nothing to do with that. That's around the time that same dude he asking for was walking around. So allegedly he got hit with a one piece. The, uh, who? Uh, Mr. Roy Lee. Lee. Mr. Roy Lee. Uh, allegedly he got hit with yeah, a one piece. Yeah, yeah. When the other dude he was looking for came, cause at first he was like, yeah, what, you be with Yellow Bees? <laughs> who led the escape? Like when, when it was time to get up out of there? When like, it how did time to get up out of there, Roy Lee was on the ground, was my boy, cause they was all after him. Yeah. It was about like 18 of them. At least about nine of them was on Roy So look, despite this explanation being very amusing, he did kind of reveal that he'd been a bit of an aggressor in this beef. And to be honest, looking at it from that perspective, Roy Lee is being truly reckless. And as the interview went on, it became clear that this sort of behaviour is apparently a common occurrence when Roy has had too much alcohol. Do you think this all could have been avoided if Roy Lee just quit drinking so much? He could have. <laughs> right, you, you got a point right there. You got a point right there. From here, the interview said point blank that Roy Lee's behavior is dangerous, with Lee revealing that his antics have brought so much danger to those around him that he can't even find security who will protect him. Well, comedian, you live a really dangerous life, bro. <laughs> Nah, a security like, guard, a security like guard told me that. Nah, a security guard told me that. He said, man, I don't think I could be your bodyguard. You you doing too much. I said, nah, we need you to come on, man. And I'll be honest, it was this follow-up interview which made me feel a little bit more that Roy Lee was just out here without a care in the world for his own safety or those around him. At one point, his nephew even tells him to squash the beef and Lee refuses. I said, it ain't between you and Yellow Bee. Nah, it ain't squash between us, man. I'ma squash them and I ain't seen nothing. I'ma squash a roach and I ain't seen the roach. And Lee would even go on to drag Mo3 and his manager Rainwater into the mix. I feel like you about to spark up like a South Dallas versus Oak Cliff Awards. Nah, it ain't gonna be South Dallas versus Oak Cliff. No. Cause we can go there, ask me that question. Shout out to Rainwater and Mo3 cause they said, uh, I get my information from Rainwater and Mo3. I ain't got nothing to do with, they ain't got nothing to do with none of this. But his mixtape coming, that's my boy, he come to my birthday party to perform, that's my Roy Lee was really out here roasting Yellow Beezy like he was on Comedy Central. But the problem is, the balance of power in the city of Dallas was shifting. Whilst Mo3 was still trying to clean up his reputation from that nightclub shooting, the other rappers in the city were coming up quick time. And according to Yellow Beezy in an interview at the start of February, Mo3 had called him to squash the beef, suggesting that their tension had stemmed from a woman spreading misinformation between them. Yeah, it was just like, like you say, it was just like a miscommunication. He called me one day and was like, uh, hey, well, yeah, just, uh, this three, I want to when I holler at you about something in your hood, I'm like, where yet? You tell him where you are, I come put up on a uh, uh, Was telling him, yeah, my Oak Cliff America said, you can't come to the cliff no more. They gonna kill you, they gonna do something, some lame. And she wasn't even talking about me. Oh, I wasn't talking about him, I was talking about the other yellow bees. There's only one yellow bees there, like, hey, what other yellow bees are you gonna say? So it stemmed from a female? Nah, not, it was, it was like a lot of that, that happened, but that was, a, that was a situation that was in it, you know what I'm saying? And I had my 
thing in it, you feel me? Now, whether or not you believe the beef was truly squashed, soon there would be more tension between the top rappers in Dallas. As Trap Boy Freddy would release his biggest mixtape to date, Freddy Krueger 3, on the 26th of February 2018, a project which had the monster posse cut featuring Yella Beezy and Go Yayo, six pick. Mo3 not being on the track would later be seen as a source of tension between the two, with Sean Cotton asking Mo3 why he wasn't on the song and Mo suggesting that he didn't even want to be on the track. You know, they came out with the pick six record, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to be a part of it. But, but, but uh, let me <laughs> Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not mad about no pics, eh? Yeah, but, but I'm just saying, though, <laughs> this is something that everybody... Freddie would go on to reveal the following month that at this point, him and Mo3 hadn't spoken in months since the drama with Go Yayo, but also suggesting he didn't have a problem with Mo3. Going on to suggest that he was just mad at him for talking to Go Yayo and putting him on the song Six Pick after the incident at the nightclub. You see, now, me and him, we were cool money, you see what I'm saying? That's my dog. We still be cool right now. But me and that ain't talking since the Yayo. Him and Yayo. Yeah. He was bad at me for still talking to Yayo, so that's what it was. With Freddy saying that he unfollowed Mo3 after finding out he was upset about the Go Yayo feature. Look, I unfollowed him, I ain't got play, we ain't got to play like we partners and none of that. Yeah. Like, if it, it smokes, it smoke. And, and, and it proved to me in the interview. Soon after this, a confrontation would take place between Mo3 and Freddy, but the details wouldn't become public until nearly a year later. Meanwhile, with his hit song That's On Me beginning to put Yella Beezy on the map nationwide, he would continue to leverage his newfound buzz into big opportunities, like his banger of a track Up One, which landed a Lil Baby verse for the remix, and a music video which dropped on March the 14th, 2018. Up One with Lil Baby went on to get an insane 93 million views on YouTube, and Trap Boy Freddy would keep his momentum running throughout the year with his latest mixtape no feelings dropping on July the 4th. Summer 2018 was a buzzing summer for Dallas rap, and Yella Beezy for the time being was the artist to watch. But with all the tension that had been brewed between Beezy and Roy Lee, it was only a matter of time before another escalation would take place. And unfortunately, that's when things would turn tragic, as Roy Lee would reveal to fans on Instagram that he had been shot. According to a later article, at 7.50pm on September the 25th, Roy Lee was sitting in the parking lot of the Preston Valley Shopping Center, when a shooting took place, leaving Roy Lee shot in the leg and being rushed to hospital. Roy Lee had been seen in social media videos following the shooting, saying that he'd been shot in the leg and that he'd called the police and ambulance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm doing all right, though. Yeah, yeah, I had, call, I, had, I had to call the laws, man. I got shot in the leg. I couldn't drive. <laughs> man, the laws was done before you would have came. You would have got laws for any thing, man. Man, you don't the up with the law. They ain't cool them up. They don't nut shop, man. Why, man? Talking about the police, man. I Man, I'm not gonna get into it with that. I couldn't drive. If I would've called him, it would've took him 20, 30 minutes. No, that mean the ambulance, police, all the five, five, that's in the same book. All of them coming. It was an emergency. They took me to the emergency. They took my boy, I told I know this too much of a thug, man. Talking about what they doing, what they don't do. Roy Lee had seemingly recovered well from the incident, and for weeks following the shooting, he would continue to perform live stand-up comedy. But at some point, he would take a turn for the worse. Other clips would circulate on social media, showing Roy Lee laid up getting treatment in the hospital after the shooting. And he would continue to discuss the shooting on social media, saying that the shooters must have seen him at the Texaco gas station. Yeah, because... Yeah, I know your legs broke. Uh, I know, that's what no, I'm saying. No, by my ankle. The left, the left ankle. It's not my hands, man. It's not my hands, man. Nah, I got shot, Brandon. I was just about to go. I was, I was just about to drive out. I said, I'm at Tesco. Oh, I thought you said shells. So I just backed in the park at the barbecue spot. So obviously they seen me at Texaco. I, I'm just saying, I think they was watching me at Texaco. Cause Texaco and Shell's across the street, across from each other. I was just sitting in the car. 
And despite briefly recovering from his injuries and continuing to perform comedy, Roy Lee would sadly pass away due to blood clots in his lungs at 1.15pm on October 13th, 2018, as he awaited another surgery. Roy Lee was beloved in the rap community, even beyond Dallas, with the likes of even Young Thug mourning the loss of Lee on Twitter. Naturally, those close to him in the Dallas rap scene, like Mo3, would be devastated by the loss. With Mo3 later opening up about his friendship with Roy Lee to Adam22 in a No Jumper interview, showing off the commemorative chain that he got made in Roy Lee's memory and saying that it wasn't right for him to go out like that. What was it like when he passed? It hurt me. Yeah. Yeah. I, could, I never put him on a shirt. I never put him on a shirt. Because it meant too much? I put him right here. A shirt. He, it's like he wasn't supposed to die yet. Like, you mm. know what I'm saying? A comedian. Mm. He ain't no gangster. Him getting shot and all this is like, that wasn't for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't even for your whole. You get what I'm saying? Right. Shoot a comedian who tell jokes on Facebook, bro. Local police would appeal for information related to the killing of Lee, but it seemed like the streets would be handling this themselves. Because only days after the murder of Roy Lee, the very man who he'd been trying to fight for over a year, Yellow Beezy, would be targeted in a shooting that would nearly claim his life. 